Once again, I wish you all and everyone to our celebration this afternoon, but especially the parents and family members of our four deacon candidates, Eddie, Nate, Marcel, and Bob. My dear brothers, the Diocese of Saginaw rejoices with you as you present yourselves to receive the sacrament of holy orders and commit yourselves to a lifetime of ministry within the church. For you four men, the call to priesthood actually began many, many years ago. God teaches us through the words of the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. This is not meant to be interpreted as some sort of predestination. Rather, it expresses the eternal desire of God that you cooperate with him in a special way as ministers to his people. Today, you will prostrate yourselves before the altar of God and humbly express your own desire to respond to that mysterious call. The beautiful words given in the formal instruction of this ceremony define your ministry. Strengthened by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you will help the bishop and his priests in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity, showing yourselves to be servants of all. Among other duties, you will be called upon to instruct believers and unbelievers alike in the teachings of the church. Despite your varied ages, like Jeremiah, you might still feel inclined to appeal to God. I am too young. I know not how to speak. I assure you, all of us priests sense that same inadequacy many times throughout our priesthood. The challenges which face the bearer of God's word and Christ's message in today's complex society appear ever new the good news of Jesus is not necessarily received as good news by everyone. Some people choose to look and not see, listen and not hear, lest they be converted and saved. It will only be possible for you to assume your responsibilities with the grace of the Lord's love and friendship. You must realize early on that it is the Lord's work to which you are called, not your own. I recommend that you meditate often on the Lord's words. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will be made, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Jesus promised the disciples that their ministry would be fruitful and blessed if they keep the commandments and remain in his love. The call you respond to today is a call to the act of service. Although the church refers to you as transitional deacons because you aspire to the priesthood, the act of service is anything but transitional. It is a charism and a character which must mold you for a lifetime. All Christians by virtue of their baptism, are called to a threefold mission to know, love, and serve the Lord. All the baptized have an obligation to deepen their own knowledge.
knowledge of the Lord, both in an intellectual way, to know the truth about God and His will, as well as in a personal way, as one friend grows to know another. The deeper our knowledge of God, the more we experience His unconditional love for us, and the more intense our love for Him grows. As we remain in His love, we submit to the burning desire to imitate His love in service to Him and to one another. As deacons, however, each one of you, Eddie, me, Marcel, and Bob, is called not just to perform acts of service or to be of service, but to actually be a servant. For you, the diaconate is not just an exercise you must go through or experience in order to make it to the goal of the priesthood. Through the laying on of hands, you will take upon yourself a new identity emblazoned in the very center of your being. You will become a new man in Christ. Being a servant in the image of Jesus Christ is the basis of all priestly life. It is the foundation upon which priesthood and the episcopacy are built. I know this analogy links, but it is like my use of the navigational system in my car. Every time I go out to the thumb, I follow carefully that directional voice in my car. While I am getting better, there are still some places I cannot find without the GPS. That's because I never engage the road. I never pay attention to the signs and markers. I leave it all up to the saddle. I must learn to engage the road, to experience each turn, so that because of my personal experience, I will be able to reach my destination in the future. It must become second nature 